let's create a modern logo animation like this one right here inside Premiere Pro. We're going to work separately on these elements to animate them, and we're also going to create a nice reflection here on the bottom as you can see, and finally we'll add this vignetting in the background to draw attention to that logo. Now the techniques used in this tutorial can also be done inside Premiere Pro CS6, so everyone can follow along. Hey folks, Jordi here for Cinecom.net and welcome to our channel where we share tutorials on filmmaking and post-production. Today we're having a look on how to create this awesome and modern logo animation inside Premiere. Now let's just get started right away. I'm going to delete all the files here in the project panel so that we can start from a blank page. Now right here we've got a Photoshop file that contains our logo. And let me just quickly open that up to show you how it's been constructed. Now inside Photoshop here, you can see that we have different kind of layers and that's exactly what you want to have as well. So we've got the camera here in the middle and then we've got all of these blades. As you can see, I can disable them and work on them separately. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, then do make sure that you have these files separately, perhaps saved as a PNG file with a transparent background. But I believe the most convenient way is just to make up your logo inside Photoshop and make sure that you have different layers, but do make sure that the background stays transparent. So heading back to that Photoshop file right here, I can just drag that into Premiere Pro to import that. And it appears here on my other screen, it'll prompt me how I would like to import that Photoshop file. And what I'm gonna do from here, from this drop down menu, I'm going to select sequence. And that will make sure that all of these elements are already inside a sequence on top of each other. Just press OK once you selected that, and that will import everything nicely within this folder. So right here we can find that sequence. If I'm going to double click on it, you'll see that everything sits on top of each other. And we've got all of these layers now separately, which we can work on now. But first, let's create our sequence. That'll be the final logo animation. So from here, this little button here, which says new item, click on that, say sequence, and uh, just pick anything. I'm just going to select your 1080p, 25 frames per second sequence. Just give that any name, for example, logo animation, and then press OK. And in here, I can drag that logo sequence that we've imported like that. And I'm gonna say, keep the existing settings to stay within that 1080p resolution. Just scale that up a little bit. And the next thing that I wanna do is actually add the background already so that we can see this black logo a bit better which works best on a bright background. Again, click on that new item menu and select color mat. Press OK. And I'm gonna select white, press OK. Just give that any name again, for example, background, press OK. And I'm going to drag that below that logo. So first I'm going to move this one to channel number two so that I can drag that background onto channel number one. Now, as we've seen in the beginning, we had this nice reflection of the logo. So let's get started with that. First of all, we're going to position the actual logo better. So select that layer, head over to effects controls, perhaps scale that down a bit more, something like this. And I'm also going to move that up somewhere right here so that we can make a bit more space for that reflection. Once that is done, you can just hold down your Alt key, select that layer and drag that to channel number three. And that will make a duplication of that layer, but still keep these scale properties and such. Then head over to effects and from here we're going to add several things to that layer. First of all, we're going to search for the vertical flip right here. Just drag that onto the top layer, for example, that will kind of flip that layer. And now we can also move it down with a position so that it sits underneath that, something like this. The next thing is going to be a linear wipe. Drag that onto that same layer as well. And that will kind of crop into this image. But the great thing here is that we also have a feather option that will make sure to make it look like a nice reflection. As for the wipe angle, we're going to put that on zero degrees so that it feathers to the bottom. And uh, let's increase that completion a bit more. Something like this, perhaps also work a bit more on that feather. Something like this looks great. Then the next thing, that's the final effect that we're going to add to this reflection. And that is a blur effect. And we're going to search for the Gaussian blur right here. Also drag that to that layer and just increase that as much as you want. That is completely up to you. And if you like, so perhaps the reflection is still a bit too much, then you can also decrease the opacity for that layer. And now we can start with animating that logo. And because we've got a copy of that, you will see that if we're going to make changes on one of these, then the other one, the reflection in this case, will also show its results. But first we'll have this quick break. The team at Premium Beat knows that when a video collides with the right music cue, 
cinematic magic happens. And that's why they've handpicked a collection of powerful cinematic tracks for your next project. This music is the perfect accompaniment for lush and inspiring visuals. Go straight to the playlist by clicking in the link in the description below. Welcome back. Let's start animating the logo now. So double click on any of these two sequences to reveal the layers of that logo. And what I want to do is kind of twirl these blades from the middle out, and that is going to be the rotation and the scale that we are going to animate. Now, depending on your logo, you might want to do something different, but I do want to show you guys something pretty cool here that is going to work on any logo that you're working on. If, for example, I'm going to take the first blade here and uh, let's create a keyframe for the scale and also for the rotation. And I'm going to move these two keyframes here more to the right because that is going to be the ending position. Because the first position is a scale of zero and a rotation of somewhere, doesn't really matter, negative somewhere in the 300. And if I'm going to play this right now, you'll see that it looks pretty harsh. There is no motion blur that makes it look more natural. And for that, Premiere Pro luckily has a great option. So that's why I'm going to reset my actions here and I'm going to head over to the effects library again. And I'm going to search for the transform effect right here under this distort. Now this is actually the exact same thing as the standard transform or the motion properties, but it has several more options which can create that motion blur. Let me just drag that transform onto blade number one. And so let me do the exact same thing. I'm going to create a keyframe for the scale and for the rotation. Then I'm going to go to the beginning and create the first position, which is scale at zero and rotation somewhere minus, doesn't matter again, 300. And I'm going to play this. As you can see, there's no motion blur yet, but I can disable something right here. And that is use compositions shutter angle. Disable that and create a different shutter angle. For example, 180 degrees. And when I'm going to play this right now, you'll see that we do have that nice motion blur going on. So basically, you only have to enable this, and then you can do anything in here you like, play with the anchor point, with the position, the scale, the skew, it doesn't matter, and you'll have that motion blur. Now, if you are familiar with my tutorials, then you know that I always hammer on it to make sure that you have smooth keyframes. In this case, that are the ending keyframes, select both of them, right click, and say ease in, as the animation is coming from the left. That will kind of smooth out the animation as it stops here on its ending position, as you can see. All right, so that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is just select that effect, copy that with Ctrl C, then select the other blades. Make sure that you're not selecting the camera because that is going to get a different animation. Go to the beginning of your timeline and just press Ctrl V to paste those effects. And there you go. You can see that now all the keyframes have been copied to the rest. Now, all of these blades come in together, but we're going to offset them so that they look a bit more dynamic. And we can do that very simply by just nudging these clips or by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and by pressing any of the arrow keys to the left or to the right side. So let's start with the first blade, which is already at the beginning of the timeline. So we can skip that one and head over to blade number two. Select that one, hold down your Alt key and press the right arrow key on your keyboard. That will nudge it one frame to the right. Then select blade number three and nudge that two frames to the right side, then Blade number four, nudge that one three frames to the right side, and so on. And if I'm going to play this back right now, you'll see that it looks a bit more dynamic. And then finally, the logo itself. I'm going to make sure that it kind of comes in from the left side here behind these blades. So what I want to do is actually move this clip here to channel number one. So I'm going to make room for all the other layers here, move that one frame higher and put that camera logo here on the bottom. Then look for a position where the camera has to come in. So somewhere right here, I'd say. And we want to animate the position, but again, we're going to drag that transform effect to that camera icon as well, so that we have that motion blur. Create a keyframe for the position, go a little bit back in time, somewhere right here, and move that out the frame somewhere right here. Again, right click on that last keyframe and say ease in. So that it looks kind of like this. And I'm going to set the shutter here as well to 180 degrees. Now in the beginning of this animation, you can see the logo standing there waiting for it to enter. So that's not really what should happen. So I'm going to go to my effects again here and search for the crop effect. You drag that onto that camera icon, select the crop effect, and that will allow you to visually change the left parameter here by moving it behind that first blade. You can also change here just the left option from here as well. 
Now you also want to make sure to cut that layer as well from the beginning of that first keyframe. So I'm just going to drag that a bit smaller, else you would have seen a piece of that camera still waiting there before that the animation has been completed from those blades. So that's it for the logo animation. Let's go back to the main sequence and have a look. Now, isn't that looking pretty awesome? And as I've told you before, the reflection here goes with the original logo animation as well, as you've done a copy of that sequence. Let's do one final thing, and that is to add a vignetting to it. Now, those who work in the latest Creative Cloud version know that we can add a vignette from the color tab. Let me just click on that very quickly here. This right here is the Lumetri color tools, and down below here, we can find a vignette. Just decrease that to add this little vignette to it. But if you are working in an older version like CS6, then you can also here in the effects controls, search for circle and drag that effect to the background. And let me just scroll down here, increase that radius like a lot. And of course, increase the feather too, right here. And that will create that vignette effect as well. And this kind of draws more attention to the middle, making that logo really pop out. So that's it, folks, on how to make this awesome modern logo animation inside Premiere Pro. Now, your logo probably looks different as mine, but you can use these same techniques to create something similar like this modern animation right here. Or if you like, you can also download the project file for free and practice on our logo to recreate this thing. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.